The Empire. Over centuries of war, the Empire has grown to become a vast realm of provinces and city-states, bound together under the rule of the Emperor. The Empire lies at the heart of the Old World, and it is the most powerful of all the realms of men. But it is a realm in constant turmoil, beset on all sides by the ferocious and the unholy. Truly, the Empire is a land of ever-present danger, where death and war are never far away. Yet despite the bloodshed, this great nation endures still, its cosmopolitan cities and military strongholds forming bulwarks against the sea of savagery. The cities of the Empire are undoubtedly the jewels in the nation's crown, where the pinnacle of human achievement is clear for all to see. Glorious palaces are surrounded by temples, the gilded minarets of arcane universities, and the flag-swathed keeps of military institutions founded at the dawn of the nation. But for the most part, the Empire is a land of superstition and faith where peasants clutch talismans to ward off evil and the corrupting power of chaos. The land is adrift in an endless sea of forest, so dense that a man can travel beneath its canopy for weeks and not see a glimmer of sunlight. Nonetheless, the Empire is a truly vast nation, and all the more powerful for it. The Empire stretches from the icy sea of claws in the north to the soaring black mountains in the south. It is a land covered by dense forests and surrounded by mountain ranges, all infested by murderous brigands, foul mutants, and ravenous monsters. Isolated against this treacherous backdrop are prosperous cities, where skilled craftsmen and affluent merchants trade their wares, and where brave soldiers and noble statesmen work to safeguard the Empire's future. Beneath this veneer of sophistication, however, the Empire is a brooding land full of ignorance and superstition, where fearful peasants clutch talismans to ward off evil sorceries and appease the gods of old. In stark contrast to the wealthy districts are slums, rife with thieves, vagabonds and heretical cults that prey on their fellow man. All aspects of human endeavour can be found within the Empire, and for every noble hero that walks the streets, there is a murderous cutthroat lurking not far away. Hi, welcome to the first Let's Roleplay. Um, we're going to be playing Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, it's just released the Immortal Empires Beta, which is a new grand sandbox campaign that takes place across the entire Warhammer world. We get basically the entire map now. Um, they've brought in all of the factions from Warhammer 1, Warhammer 2, and now the newly released game Warhammer 3 as well. Um, they've tried to fit them all onto this map. I think they've done an excellent job. Um, when this game first released, it wasn't in the best of states, uh, but now it's, uh, it's, it's a really enjoyable experience. Um, and since they announced Warhammer 3, I've been thinking about doing this series for a while. Um, and after realizing that, you know, Immortal Empires has come out, and it's good, it's not, you know, um, bad like some of us might have been expecting it to be, particularly after the release of Warhammer 3, um, since it's in a good state, I figured I'd start doing this series. Uh, the idea behind this is uh, I'm going to be playing um, different factions as we go through. Uh, we're starting with the Empire here, starting with Karl Franz, um, who is the, is the Emperor of the uh, Empire of Man, which uh, starts here in Altdorf and uh, reaches out across the entire empire, which covers more or less this region here that I'm circling with my cursor. Um, this is going to be... We're going to be trying to roleplay this campaign as much as we can. Um, there's going to be little interludes here and there, like with the introduction that I just did, um, where we're going to have a bit more... Uh, of an experience exploring the lore related to each of the factions that we're playing as. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good time. Um, I'm not <laughs> some kind of like expert player, so don't uh, don't be expecting any kind of strategic genius 
uh, in these games. I'm not bad by any means, but uh, I am a campaign-only player. I've never played like a competitive multiplayer or anything like that. So uh, it's uh, yeah, it's just going to be a pretty chill experience. Um, I'm I'm trying to angle this towards people that might not own this game or have played this game before or, or might not know anything about Warhammer. So I'm hoping that these little campaigns are going to be a way for people to you know, get themselves interested in the game and uh, maybe maybe pick it up for yourself. And of course, if you if you play the game already, maybe maybe you'll just have fun with some of the lore that I'm going to share with you guys. So without with all that out of the way, let's uh, get started, shall we? Um, so we've got Altdorf here. This is the capital um, of the faction that we've started as. Uh, Karl Franz is Reichland. Reichland is one of the provinces of the Empire. He was elected as Emperor by the other elected counts of Middenland, Hockland, Talabekland, Stirland, Avaland, uh, Wissenland, and I think there's uh, I think there's another one as well somewhere. Uh, Nordland. Oh, and Ostland. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 there's actually a fair few elected counts, and we'll, we'll we'll come to those in the uh, in the law section. The idea being that as we unite each province under under Karl Franz, we're gonna we're gonna have a little a little law section about each of them in turn. So. The First thing that we need to do is we need to deal with a rebellion that is taking place here. Several settlements in Reichland have seceded from the Empire and rebelled against Karl Franz's rule, uh, believing him to be an unworthy successor to his father. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the main city. Um, we have money here that we're going to spend on recruiting units and building buildings. That's the main purpose of them, uh, m main purpose of our treasury. Uh, we want to, uh, as we upgrade our settlements, we'll get access to new buildings and new structures that are locked behind tiers. And we reach these tiers by upgrading the main building, which is this one that I've just built here. Um, and as we do that, of course, we're going to start making more money, which is going to increase our treasury. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have a nice time. So, the first thing to do Bring is to, to deal with this rebel over here, Helmut Ludendorff. Ludenhoff, rather, sorry. Fight for our nation! So, this is a pretty easy win, but uh, we're going to fight it anyway, just to uh, have a look at the battlefield for ourselves and see how it all plays out. We've got a, we've got a pretty balanced um, combined arms force over here. We've got a selection of infantry, we've got some, uh, some hand gunners here, who are uh, going to be our, our ranged units. We've got a heavy cavalry unit and we've got an artillery unit. On the other hand, the enemy does not have anything closely resembling the same kind of force that we do. They only have one ranged unit. They have no cavalry to speak of whatsoever. And uh, it looks like we also have <laughs> the advantage of a slope. Don't miss fire! So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit unfortunate for them, isn't it? Alright. Uh, so. Just wanted to adjust the audio balance of my microphone to the to the game's audio there a little bit. Rough on them. Right. So I think what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna anyone? maneuver our hand gunners over here. Uh, actually I'll just turn the audio down a little bit. Take a look at the speech. Hand gunners. Yeah that'll do. Okay. So we're gonna move our uh, we're gonna move ourselves up onto this slope over here. Um, let's see if we can take it. We're going to put our infantry to hold these sections here, put our mortars and our gunners up on the slope over here, and uh, with the terrain advantage, we should be able to get a pretty a pretty clean win with very few casualties. So let's see how that goes, shall we? My rule is absolute. Moving now. So we're going we're gonna to try and block up this place here. Hopefully we can get there before they do. Actually, I think I want these guys at the front to go and take that location. These guys can move back a little bit. They're not going to get there in time otherwise. Can we actually shoot over this? I don't know if we can, you know. Um, we might need to instead do this. This should work, though, I think. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have done this way earlier. I should have sent these cavalry round to the back to take out these archers. Fortunately, damage is done now. Definitely should have dealt with that beforehand. Oh no, they're still on skirmish mode. 
So uh, if a unit's on skirmish mode, it's uh, it's going to try and run away from any melee infantry that come near it. Uh, which we don't want them to do, because we want them to hold position. Let's get Carl Franz in there as well. And get the, the great swords in there as well. Right, so that should... Uh, I should have those crossbows dealt with pretty quickly. My subjects call. Out. Yes, my Get them in there. Okay, that's them dealt with. Uh, we can uh, shoot downhill into these units. We should have an angle, I think. Do you have an angle? Do they not have an angle? Really? You should do. Alright. In any case, we can uh, come into the back of them here. It should be a pretty clean, easy win, as I said. We took a few more casualties than we needed to. Our handgun has really got messed up there because I uh, made the mistake of not sending the Reichsguard round to deal with those crossbows. But, uh, yeah. We'll take what we get. It's fine. No, we just need to... Uh, we need to break this leader here. We want to stop the mortar from firing now because there's such a mix-up of troops here. We'll probably end up causing a fair bit of friendly fire, and we don't want to do that. Come on, take him out. Get in there, Franz. <laughs> Now they're all trapped, which means we should be able to kill off most of these enemies. Oh, come on, Franz! Take him out already! What are the greatswords doing? Let's kill this guy already! There we go. Right, now we're just going to fast forward for a second, so that we can let our troops run down the rest of these... Uh, Unfortunate rebels. Clean out the last of them. Turn off fire. Uh, turn off fire at will on our handgun as well. Surprised by how resilient they are. Um, there. What if we try this? We just get the Reichsguard in there. And I'll get them killed a little bit quicker. So every single unit here has an individual health bar. Um, you can see how much is remaining for that unit. Um, just there on the top of their little icon. So you can see that our handgunners over here, they've ended up at about half strength. Um, each individual man in the unit also has an individual health pool. Um, but the unit itself shares uh, collective HP as well. Um, once they start to run quite low on men, probably around 10% or so, usually they will uh, rout and start running away, like uh, these folks are. What we're doing here is we're, do we're just trying to kill off the rest of them so that uh, they can't run away to live and fight another day. We want them dealt with here and now. Surprised at how long this is taking, though. <laughs> There's only two spearmen left in that unit. Come on. <laughs> Kidding me, right? Did we kill the Lord? I'm pretty sure we did kill the Lord. I don't remember getting a notification for it, but I wasn't watching specifically. Alright, that should be fine. Okay, decisive victory. Happy days. That's what we were predicted in the auto resolve. If we got any worse than that, that would be kind of embarrassing. <laughs> uh, so you'll notice that we ended up at about half health on our handgunners over here in the battle, but it seems like they've gone back up to about 80% of their health. Now, the reason for that is that it's a, it's a bit of a quirk of the system, really. If a unit survives, um, if, if, if an individual unit takes damage to their individual HP, but they don't die in the battle, that individual unit will get their health back to full after the battle, which means that if a lot of your units are damaged but they didn't die, when they restore their health, that collective HP will increase as a result. That effect does not apply to the likes of single entities like Carl Franz here. 
all of the damage that he took during the battle, he keeps. Um, so he's uh, he, he did get a bit of a beating and he, he lost a bit of his health. But the hand gunners, because most of them were just damaged rather than dead, uh, they've actually come back to a decent amount of health. So that's nice. Uh, that's a little perk. And not only that, but uh, we can use take on cap. Actually, we don't want to do that because we're going to replenish. But we could, if we wanted to, um, take on captives to recover some of the health for the units uh, that were damaged. But we don't need to do that. Um, we're going to instead execute the captives. Uh, we're going to kill them so that we can get uh, some increased experience, clean up the stragglers, and uh, we'll teach people not to ever rebel against us again. Let this serve as a lesson to them. Okay. So, was that dealt with? Um, ooh. Interesting. Garibur Greatswords. Oh, okay. Um, this is actually my first time playing Carl Franz, believe it or not. Uh, last time I played him was in Warhammer 1. So I figured I would start with Franz because... Um, because he's like, you know, the Empire is like the main faction of Warhammer, and Karl Franz is the leader of the Empire. So I thought, hey, why not start the series with uh, with the main main man? But uh, yeah, it's um. Oh, I didn't actually apply the changes here. <laughs> that explains why it was still so loud. What? Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay. Who calls? So here we have Franz's skill tree. Um, basically, as our character levels up, we can see what level he is over here in the top right. Uh, rank, technically. It's not called level, but the same thing. Um, characters can gain levels. I think they go up to level 40 in Immortal Empires. It might be 60. I'm not sure. It's either 40 or 60, one or the other. Um, and as they gain levels, each time they gain a level, they will gain a point. Uh, and these points can be placed into these different um, skill trees. And as you unlock this one here, you'll unlock this set, and then when you fill out enough from here, I think you need four of them. If you, if you fill out four pips in here, you'll get this one, and then you do another four pips in here, and you'll get this one, so on and so forth. Same applies for each of these other trees in turn. Normally, the blue line relates to campaign map bonuses, bonuses on the, on the campaign map where your character moves around. The red line applies to bonuses for your troops, and the yellow line is bonuses for the character themselves to make them stronger. And the ones up here at the top are usually uniques. Um, so, we're going to take Root Marcher to begin with. This is a, this is a very common one uh, for people to take, because campaign movement range is very, very good. Very good indeed. Um, so with that done, uh, what we want to do now is we want to try and capture Grunberg. We're going to take over our first settlement. This is going to be a siege. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, though, before that, is we're going to choose our research. Now, we also have technology. If you've ever played something like um, Civilization or any kind of strategy game, you'll know that uh, technology trees are quite common. Um, Total War Warhammer is no exception. It, uh, it has tech trees, um, and for the Empire particularly, they are, it is quite straightforward. Generally, the whole idea of the Empire is that it's very straightforward um, and makes a lot of sense in and of itself, whereas the other factions can be a bit more... Wacky, shall we say. A bit, a bit different, a bit strange in, in some ways. Um, so, we need to decide which of the first researches we are going to go for. Um, now, I feel like we are going to get a lot of value out of improving... Probably tithe rebates, actually. Um, I don't really feel like our army is in a bad position at the moment. I feel like getting control, increased control over our territory, is a good idea. Because we're going to be capturing more settlements in quick succession here. Which means that every time we capture a settlement, the amount of control, or public order, if you like, um, is going to decrease. If the public order ever hits minus 100, it will cause a rebellion. Uh, we, we, we want to avoid that, if possible. Sometimes, sometimes you want them to rebel. There can be some circumstances where that's desirable, but not right now. Yes. So, first thing to do. Attack. Let's go take them back. There we go. We've got Pyrrhic victory here, which is not great. Um, Pyrrhic means that uh, you're going to... You're going to win the fight, but you may as well not have bothered because you lost so many men. Uh, I think I think it originally references uh, Pyrrhus of Epirus, um, who was a commander who fought the Romans, um, and in many battles, he lost, even though he won the battle, he lost more men than his opponent. So in the end, he couldn't keep fighting the war, even though he kept winning. Um, so we want to avoid a Pyrrhic victory if possible, that's not great. Um, we can, if we so choose, auto-resolve the combat. 
Um, and that is generally for, like, you know, small, easy fights. Like the one we did before. Really, if, if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for the Let's Roleplay, I probably would have just auto-resolved that. But, uh... I wanted to, to do the first fight. This one, though, we are going to fight, because if we auto-resolve this, we're going to suffer a lot of casualties, and I think we can do better than that. So, let's get in there and take this town. Something really cool that um, Warhammer 3 did, as opposed to its predecessors, is um, it's introduced these minor settlement battles. Now, they are a bit controversial, because there are some content creators who have been saying that, uh, oh, they're, they are, uh, they're too prevalent, and that we don't get enough field battles. And, uh, to an extent, I might agree with that, kind of. Um, but I think that, at least for now, they're, they're quite good. I don't really know how you'd resolve the problem, but um, I think that the minor settlements are a good addition, and they're interesting. Because uh, it used to be, in the past, if this was Warhammer 2, and we were besieging and attacking this settlement, we wouldn't actually be fighting here, we'd just be fighting out in an open plain that looked like this. Which isn't... it doesn't really make sense, you know. Like, if, you, if you're attacking a settlement, you'd expect to, you know, attack a settlement, right? Um, okay. So here we are at Grunberg. This is the map for it. We've got, uh... We've got a pretty poor option for elevation here. We're going to be going uphill the entire way. Um, and obviously, a height is always an advantage, particularly for the Empire, because of these gunners. Um, they really enjoy having a height advantage because they shoot in straight lines. So if they have a height advantage, they can shoot at a lower diagonal, and uh, it, it allows them to shoot into melee while the infantry in front of them are fighting further down on the slope. So it's really, really good tip if you decide to play this faction, try to take hills. Take hills, put your mortars on the top of the hill, put your hand gunners along the slope, and then put your infantry near the bottom of the slope, and the hand gunners will be able to shoot down into the melee, rather than being blocked by their, by their allies. Okay, so... Let's move ourselves over... I don't really know if we've actually got any options for a way in that isn't... Oh, here we go. Okay. We can come in through here. If we're coming through here, it's mostly flat terrain, and in fact, we actually have a height advantage at some locations, particularly for taking the uh, the key building here, the center of the city. Okay. So. Show us the foe. So we'll put the hand gunners at the side like this. Um, it's kind of a narrow passway, it seems. I'll put the Reichsguard over here, maybe. Um, I, I guess the Reichsguard could do something where they, they kind of come around in, in this way and uh, see if we can get some flanking action going on. But uh, the main hammer of our infantry is going to come down the middle here. Um, see if maybe we can get some shots in from the side of the hand gunners. We'll see what happens. Okay. Let's go for it. What do we got? Okay, so it looks like they've blocked this entrance with some spearmen. We do not want to send our cavalry into spearmen. That's a bad idea. Um, so... I think we can get up on this hill over here, which would be really good. Now, I want these hand gunners to see if they can take out that tower that's going to be shooting guys over there. Let's get in there. Let's get in there, boys. Let's go. Is he moving off? He is moving off. Okay, we might be able to get in. If we can get in here, we get past these spearmen without an engagement. That'd be really good. Let's see what we can do. How effective is that? It's not very effective, is it? We're wasting ammunition there, basically. What's going on in here? Okay. Can we get past? Can we get past? Come on. Come on. Mind you, they're still moving. They're not braced. You know what? Have them. Have them. Not perfect, but it got us in there. That's what we wanted. All right.
what we really want is we want the infantry to go and engage. We want the handgunners to have a clear line of sight. Actually, it's not too bad that the race guard are over here, to be honest. Because now they're distracting all these units. And we can just kind of get in here. we got free reign. Let's go. Sounds pretty good to me. It's unfortunate about these guys who got caught in the spearmen. Um, but as long as these guys are busy uh, chasing after the Reichs guard, I think this is to our advantage. We can still get a bit of a flanking maneuver going on here. Oh, oh, oh. Careful now. Oh, that's not good. Actually, we want to come around this way. Right, get yourselves in there. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Ooh. Come on, let's get around there. Go, 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 go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Move, 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 move. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, now this this is what we wanted the whole time. Here we go. Uh, we don't really have a shot for the for the handgunners. Um, let's just keep opening fire on them. But this this is what we were here for. There we go. That's what we wanted. Spot us the target. Uh. Okay, there we go. See, these guys have routed. Great swords. Ready for war. Right guard knights. Oh, right guard back. We're going to go in for another back charge. Come on. And now, we charge. Not particularly a great one because of all the routing swordsmen, but it'll do. What I don't want to do is get the ranks guard into this situation where they're, they're penned in from behind. We really want to break this... Oh, we did it. Okay. Very good. So now, we're going to pull the Reichsguard around, send them back around here, while these infantry units push in. Where's our handgunners? <laughs> oh, I should have put them on guard mode. Oh, well. Alright, let's go. Come on. Get out of there. Go, go, go. They should be pretty straightforward now. We could, of course, send out... If, if this was a more protracted engagement, we could... Uh, go out and try to capture some of these supply locations to stop them from uh, building more towers and barricades, but uh, I don't think that's going to be necessary in this situation. Should just be able to break them here. There we go. We have won. A close victory. Uh, we probably could have done better there, I'm not going to lie. Um, wasn't an absolutely fantastic result, but you know, we, we won. We would have suffered more casualties than that um, if we tried to auto-resolve. We probably would have suffered about 400 to 500 casualties. So, um, 
Not as good as it could have been, but definitely better than the alternate. Now we've captured the, uh, the city, the settlement. Okay, so after we capture a settlement, we have several choices. We can uh, occupy the settlement, we can uh, loot it for valuables and then occupy it, or we can just sack it and leave. Or we could burn it to the ground if we were so inclined, but uh, in this particular situation, we don't really want to go looting and sacking our way across our own homeland. I might set a bit of a bad public image and maybe, you know, give some legitimacy to the idea of rebelling when, <laughs> when the Emperor comes back to uh, burn his own people to the ground. No, we're just going to uh, peacefully occupy the settlement, try to, uh, try to restore some public order here. Um, okay, so what have we got in here? We've got, a, got some grazing pastures, we're growing some cows here. It's pretty useful. It's going to increase our casualty replenishment, which is going to be helpful. Um, casualty replenishment refers to the amount of healing that a unit gets each turn as uh, it drafts up new units and uh, injured recover and so on and repairs are done, etc. Um, they, they will recover health at the end of each turn, assuming they are not attacked or otherwise prevented from replenishing. Carl Francis ranked up again. Um, oh. That's a phone call. Let's reject that. Uh, okay, so we're going to take the uh, red line trait, I think. Uh, which is going to increase the experience per turn for each unit in our army. It's quite helpful. Ready. Um, so uh, units can uh, rank up over time. You'll notice that uh, this Reichsguard unit has acquired rank 1. Uh, which is going to increase its leadership, attack, and defense. The more ranks that they gain, uh, the more that these qualities increase over time, and eventually they can become quite powerful. Uh, quite helpful. Um, okay. right by Sigmar's crown. Last thing to do is check our diplomacy screen. Once upon a time, in the days of Warhammer 2, you would need to individually go through every single faction check whether or not they might be interested in making treaties with you. With Warhammer 3, they have introduced a wonderful quality of life feature called Quick Deal, which has been brought over from another game of theirs called Total War Three Kingdoms. Who calls? Um, and with Quick Deal, we can choose which type of diplomatic agreement we want to look for, all right. and we can find out, just from a glance, all of the factions that might be interested in taking them. So. We can ask for a non-aggression pact with Midland. We know that they'll accept because it's already told us. Yeah, um, we can see that. We, we can also see reasons for why they might be interested in making that treaty. So we can see here that because we are stronger than them, quite significantly, um, they're interested in non-aggression. Now we can click the balance offer button um, in order to make the, uh, the the diplomatic treaty come to as close to naught as possible. Um, and that will basically, if, if we have a positive um, likelihood of success on an agreement, we can click the balance offer button to get a payment of gold from the, uh, from the relevant faction uh, that will bring it down to make it a balanced deal. On the other hand, if we were not favoured in the deal and they weren't interested in it, we could click the balance offer button to pay gold to them in order to get the deal. So, uh, yeah. It's a really nice quality of life feature, whereas before, you would just have to check manually every single faction to find out what they were interested in. And you wouldn't get this either. It does, it does tell you either low, medium, or high in terms of likelihood. There was no kind of granular breakdown uh, of any of this. So we're just going to quickly go through all of these elect accounts that are interested in making deals with us. We do not want to conquer them by force. That is not what we want to do. Um, we do not unite the Empire through tyranny and force of arms. We unite it through leadership and diplomacy. Looks like that's all of the deals we can get for now. Seems We're going to need to convince the rest of the elect accounts to get on board with the uh, with Karl Franz being Emperor. So... 
Caribou Great Souls. I'm pretty sure. Uh, elect to count state troops. Yeah, okay. So uh, we unlock these as we unite more of the Empire. Uh, these will kick in after 15 turns, which is quite nice. For now, though, um, I think we are going to. What do we want to do? What do we want? I think we want probably more infantry so that we can uh, have a better job at storming. Actually, no. No. We want archers. We'll get some archers. We need more ranged firepower, I think. We've got we've got a bulky enough front line right now, really. Um, what's this? I've not seen this before. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, Who calls? Uh, as, as I say, I've not, I've not played uh, Carl Franz since uh, since Warhammer One, and none of this was was a thing. But they've had quite a lot of uh, updates since. Uh, so it looks like we can see the fealty. Sigma's will. This faction does not show fealty to the Empire. Huh. What? Fealty is a measure of how strongly an elector believes in the cause of the Empire. Reaching a maximum fealty of 10 will result in the elector offering to confederate their faction, whereas an elector whose fealty reaches 0 will attempt to secede from the Empire. Okay. So, when we get their fealty to 10, they will offer to join us. Interesting. Okay, so that, that that's kind of our agenda here. We want to try and get the fealty of all of the elector counts uh, to come up to 10. Uh, so that they will offer to confederate with us. And unite under the banner of Reichland. Okay, so that brings us, I think, electoral machinations. This. So we can spend prestige to do things. What's prestige? We gain prestige through battles. Okay, so we can, like, manipulate our relationship with the various different elect accounts. Quite good. I'm wondering who we would actually want to do that with. Um, probably Norm. Be a good start. Their fealty is quite low. Averheim's fealty is quite high. Talabeckland's fealty is real is very high. It could be worth trying to get Talabeckland. Although if we do, that'll put us on the border with several unpleasant individuals, so maybe not. I think maybe for now, we try to focus on improving our relations with Norn. That's what we'll do. No, that's, that's Ostomar, not Wissenland. Eben von Liebwitz. Improve relations. Okay. I am Prince and now we can end the turn. Uh, I'm just going to quickly make some changes to the camera here. Just to get the settings how I like. Okay, that should be fine. So whenever we click end turn, obviously all of the um, AI factions get to have their go. And uh, in Immortal Empires, there is quite a lot of them. There is uh, 277 to start with. You can already see that uh, uh, five of them have been wiped out already. <clears throat> uh, four of them. Is it time? Uh, hmm. Okay. So I think the next step is we we need to take Uber's Reich. The settlement over there, Isle Heart, which has a rebel army mustering inside it. It's not great. Now, I think what we want to do right now is get ourselves a extra... Ooh! <laughs> Naples poison attacks? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're going to look at getting ourselves a second lord. I'm just wondering what we want to get ourselves. Um... And I think it's probably going to be this chap over here, Griswold Aldrich. So an Arch Lector is a Battle Priest Lord. They are capable of using Battle Prayers um, to enhance the combat potential of, uh, of Imperial Troops, which is going to be really helpful for us. Um, 
Now, this fella in particular, they all have traits that make them kind of unique, and this, this, this chap in particular, he has poison attacks for some reason. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be quite helpful for us, I think, because we don't have access to any poison otherwise. We'll take that. Grand Hammer of Sigma. Actually, undo that. Can we get... Yeah, okay. We want to get these. We need to get these battle prayers um, basically straight away. These, these are so good. They're going to be amazing. Um, so with that done, we're going to move over to here. Pick up the pace. Start heading through the Reichwald Forest. Uh, we'll recruit some extra... Get some extra infantry. Let's quickly check the diplomacy tab. Check if there's anything new. Well, there is. Yes, there we go. Ooh, that's a hefty sum of cash. Right there. Yeah, we'll take that. Thank you. Yeah, another one here. Yeah, thank you. We'll get some from the uh, from the dwarves over here as well. Uh, they're also interested in a non-aggression pact with us. Probably because we're significantly powerful. Kislev. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll talk more about them later. They're uh, willing to have a trade agreement with us, which is nice. We'll take that. How about military access treaties? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is uh, Midland interested in a military access treaty? So is Talabekland. And uh, so is Wissenland, which is really good. Okay, so... Military access treaties are great because they give us the freedom to move our armies through their territory without suffering any diplomatic penalties. Uh, so that can be really helpful for us, particularly if we need to go marching around the Empire to defend the elect accounts from various evil factions that want to uh, do us harm. Uh, me, uh, I didn't check whether there was any alliance options. No. No, nothing. Okay. Command here. Okay, so um, your lords, when they are on the campaign map, they have different stances that they can go into. These stances have different effects depending on what you're trying to achieve. Um, we'll go into these in a bit more detail later, but what I'm about to do now is I'm going to put the arch... Normally the arch lector over here that we recruited in Altdorf, he wouldn't be able to reach Ubersreich this turn. You'll see that the edge of his movement range is this, this little line here. So he can get to... Uh, he can move along over to here. That's as far as he can go. He can't. He can't get any further. You see this uh, this red line here. But we can activate forced march stance. Now he will be tired in battle, and uh, there are various other dangerous aspects to forced march stance. For example, if they are attacked, they can't retreat and will be wiped out immediately. Um, so forced march is quite dangerous, but there are some circumstances in which you want to use it. For example, Karl Franz is fresh and ready to go. Um, so he can get in, and he can reach Ubersreich. Now he's going to lay siege to Ubersreich. And now I'm going to move the Arch Lecter up to stand next to Karl Franz. Even though he's in Force March stance, he can't attack in Force March stance, but he can reinforce, so he can help Karl Franz do the fight. Right? Here he is, and he, he's going to be coming into the battle himself. Now, we're not going to fight this one. Um, this is... This is going to be a complete wash. They they do not stand a chance. We got a decisive victory predicted with low casualties. So we're going to auto-resolve this fight. And of course, <laughs> we would have done much better than that. <laughs> that is, uh, the, the auto-resolve is not particularly generous uh, with the amount of casualties that it inflicts. Um, it, it treats you as if you are uh, a moron <laughs> that, that just cannot command their army properly. But uh, whatever, it's it's fine. We're gonna occupy the settlement here. Okay, uh, it's, yeah, it's not great. It's not great. We do have a battle coming up. Probably should have fought that one, but whatever. It's fine. It's all fine. Okay. Yes. So, get ourselves an extra infantry unit and an extra archer as well. Um, now that we've uh, captured Ubersreich, um, we've only got one more province to claim. 
and we brought Reichland under our control. Uh, Karl Franz is now mounted, which is very good. Uh, what do we want? That sounds good. We'll get the Emperor's Finest, which will increase the melee defense for our infantry units. That'll be nice. Um... So we've got to fight with uh, this units in Isleheart coming up. We do have quite a lot of money. And more money than we know what to do with, really. Do you know who I am? And Bretonians over here are uh, interested in a non-aggression pact as well, which is great. Again, all of these factions that I'm engaging with, this is uh, very preliminary stuff. They'll get their turn, they'll get their time, we'll, we'll give them attention, and, and of course we're going to do more campaigns where we will play as all the other factions. We'll get a nice experience of what they're all like, but for now, yes. focusing on the Carfrans and the Empire. Foremost of the provinces is Reichland, sheltered by the Grey Mountains, and carpeted by the Reichwald forest. It is the westernmost of the Empire's great provinces, and it is the seat of the Imperial government and the richest, most cosmopolitan province in the Empire, and not just because Reichlanders say so. From north to south, from the edge of the wasteland to the borders with Wissenland, Reichland is blessed with fertile farmland, vineyards, and dairy fields that produce a surplus of products for export. The mines of the Grey Mountains yield many valuable ores and stones, from iron and gold to marble and gems, while the Reichwald Forest, generally safer than woods in the other parts of the Empire, yields valuable timber that supports a thriving boat-building industry. Government patronage helps, too. The Emperors, who since Wilhelm overthrew Dieter in the 25th century, have also been the Elector Counts of Reichland, have lavished imperial largesse on their home province. Canals, road building, programs to improve the methods of farming, encouragement of the development of free towns and the mercantile classes, all these have served to make the Reichland a gem among the empire's provinces. The wide river Reich is the province's lifeblood, and the constant traffic of barges carry goods and people to and from every corner of the empire. The imperial capital, Old Dorf, the greatest city in the Old World, sits where the Talabek converges with the Reich. The Emperor, Karl Franz, Elector Count of Reichland, rules from here, a champion of Sigmar and embodiment of the Empire's might. to my men I serve Sigma so here we go then men I will fight with you Ulrich's will awaiting orders so here's my plan here Carl Franz is going to besiege this settlement Isle Heart. Okay, the, this settlement has a garrison, uh, pretty, pretty strong garrison, well, not that strong, but uh, enough to complement the forces that are actually inside, which is uh, this group of units here. So, they probably have about equal numbers to us, but they also have the advantage of being inside a defended settlement. However, while we lay siege to them, they are going to suffer attrition. Normally, they, they should be suffering attrition. I don't know why they're not. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, we are besieging. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why it's not displaying. Normally, it it, it, it should be displaying that uh, they're going to suffer from attrition. I don't know whether there's some special circumstances here that are making that not apply. I don't know. But um, we'll find out, I guess. Meanwhile, um, Griswold back here is gonna he's gonna stay in Uber's right so that he can muster some more troops. And this will either play out in one of two ways. The first way this can play out is they will come out of the settlement to attack us in an open field battle. I think we might have a better chance of winning in that circumstance. 
Um, or they stay where they are. We get the reinforcements. The reinforcements move over to Carl Franz, and we just storm them with superior numbers. Win-win, in my opinion. Uh, meanwhile, let's uh, upgrade some of these buildings over here. Um, what do we want to get? Got stables for sure. What's this? All right. So in order to be able to recruit the Empire Knights, we need the blacksmith. Okay, so we'll get the blacksmith as well. Um, and then we'll upgrade Uber's Reich. Grunberg isn't really under threat at the moment. Okay, looks fine. Honor before glory. Some more uh, non-aggression pacts. We trade uh, military access of Hawkwood. Welcome, my country. It's fine. So. Protector of the realm. Okay. Um, so we have some more prestige over here. So we're gonna do another electoral machination and improve our relations with Wissam Land again. And war calls. Okay. Let's see what happens. What's the plan? What's the play? Hmm. Stirland demands region. Historically, the region of Flensburg has been ruled over by Stirland, but it's currently under the control of the elect account of another state. Alberic Hopped Anderson, the rightful elect account of Stirland, has asked for your help in restoring his rule over this land immediately. Uh, so we can improve our relationship with Stirland or Avaland. Now, Stirland... Avaland is on the border with Sylvania. Sylvania is ruled by the vampires. Stirland is closer to us, Avaland is on the border. They have an equal amount of fealty, so there's no real, like, fealty consideration to be made here. I feel like we should probably respect the traditional borders of the Empire. We should intervene here and have the territory restored to Stirland. It does rightfully belong to them, legally speaking, after all. So let's do that. There is, of course, a second motive, which is that Stirland is closer to us than Avalanche. Uh, when we if, if we continue to gain their favour, then uh, once they reach 10 fealty, they'll be connected to our territory, rather than us needing to go through another faction first. So, you know, you can always justify your uh, decisions with uh, high-minded ideals, but ultimately it's just a power play. So... I've kept Dialheart under siege. Uh, as I s expected, yeah, they have suffered attrition. You can see that there. So, we're going to move Griswold up here. Actually, he's just going to embed his troops into Carl Franz's unit. Okay. Now, if we ought to resolve this, we would suffer casualties significantly. Okay. So I think we will uh, we'll wrap up this session then with the unification of Reichland as we uh, crush the rebel forces at the Battle of Isleheart and secure control of the last uh, the last region in the province. Maybe we'll get to see the uh, see the Arch Lector at work as well. His battle prayers. What's the situation? Um, looks like we've got lower advantage over here. Oh, it's the same map. Okay. Literally the same map. Okay. Unfortunately, not all not all settlements are unique. Some of them are generic. Oh, well, that's very annoying, isn't it? It's going to take six minutes for him to get here. Ugh. That won't do. Okay. Well, in that case, he's just going to have to come in from over... 
Where did he come in from originally? Is it there? There or so? Okay, so... Alright, Arch Lector is going to come in from over there. Um, I mean, we could... I guess we could just... We could just wave him to turn up, I guess. Not really any harm. We have got artillery. So I guess we can just... Uh, we'll, we'll deploy the artillery up here. Um, have the infantry ready to go. Move the uh, move the projectile units up to the front. Have the cavalry over here ready to perform a flanking action, just in case. Have these over here. Our friends can go here. Right, and uh, literally, we're just gonna bombard them while we wait for the uh, for the archlector to arrive. There we go. What's the range on that thing? Oh, we're in range of it. <laughs> All right, done. Oh, no. Didn't want to do that. Whoops. Oh, dear. Disrupted the formation! <laughs> okay. There we go. Get our friends moving up as well. Open some artillery fire up over there. Now the only issue here, of course, is that we've got this uh, this bloody tower over here that's going to be causing us a bit of a head, bit of a headache until we take it out. So uh, it's going to be a bit of an active fight while we wait for the arch lector to turn up, unfortunately. But we're not gonna we're not gonna push hard into them. We're just gonna kind of secure this area, and then if they want to come to us, they can. But we're gonna wait for the arch lector. It's not too bad. Yeah, okay. Sigma, Missile units. Clean this line up. We are Sigma Red. Moving faster. And gunners. There we go. Okay, with that tower down, we can continue to bombard the enemy here with our mortars. If the enemy wants to come to us, they can. <laughs> what is this accuracy? This is useless. Oh, there we go. We'll take that. Thank you. forward a little bit here. Ah, oh, they got another tower. Nightmare. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> they tried to come close. It's not going to work out too well for them, is it? Uh, let's change the target here. Go for that instead. Come on, Arch Lector. Be on guard mode as well, actually. If we put these on guard mode as well. We don't want them like, going too far away from the formation. Right, just uh, about 30 seconds or so. Well, 40 seconds until the Arch Lector arrives. Start the event. Take out this tower. There we go. Should be here any moment now. There he is. Hey! Get him over here. Now I don't know about the uh, I don't know about the uh, 
Reichsguard flank manoeuvre this time. Their, uh, their numbers are quite substantial. I don't really want the Reichsguard getting caught out on their own. I'd say we're probably on about equal number, really. So let's move the Great Sword and the Halberdiers up front. We'll, we'll, we'll use the heavy infantry that we've got as, like, shock forces and uh, push ourselves in there. Another of these damn towers. Right, shoot them. Shoot them dead. Gun down these spearmen. Come on. Let's go. Get the arch lector up there. There we go. Advance. I will not stand idle. No! We are Sigma's heirs. Looks like they're going to let us in. We'll take that. We can't get up on there? That sucks. What a shame. Okay, so we advance the archers forward. And there's the battle prayers at work. Very high melee attack on our units right now. We are ready. At speed. Get the gunners over here. Spot us the target. To battle. Yes, sir. Quickly. Understood. For the Emperor. Take the ground. Ten gunners. Go, go, go. Our weapons are yours. Get the brakes guard in here as well. Quickly! Charge! Open fire. There we go. Hmm, that's a problem. Got some reserve units over here we can start moving in. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Right, let's get the race guard in there so we can deal with these bloody archers. Our handgunners are getting shot up pretty bad right now. Not what we want. Now, I appreciate there is a large number of spearmen there. But we're not really in a position to... Uh, have the luxury of being uh, prudent about the presence of those spearmen. We really need to get rid of these crossbowmen. I don't know what these rights guard are doing. <laughs> they are looking a little bit confused there. All right, that's fine. I guess it's a surge forward. Why not? Let's go. Yes, 
Where's Rex got? There they are. Move, move, move. Now, I think what we can do here... A very chaotic street fight. We serve the Emperor. Swordsman. Small held and hammer. Ulrich's chief. Heading out. The guards have abandoned us by Ulrich's wrath. By Ulrich's wrath. Halberdiers. More friends. This is a melee. to bits, probably by the, uh... right, okay, it's fine. My subjects call, awaiting your command. Missile troops! Ah! Is we can get ourselves in here. Very well. Reich's guard have, uh, not really done too well for themselves. It's, uh, mostly my fault, but, uh, you know what, they died for the cause. Fine. He's, but his spearmen have recovered. Right, fight them. The Reich's guard are on the way, just fight them. Thank you. See if we can kill the general. Oh, this is a, this is chaos, isn't it? Look at this. What a mess. Look what happens when you fight in a narrow alleyway, I suppose. He's recovering. They are. Blimey. Run them down. Make sure they don't come back. Quick march. Let's get in there. Let's go. Don't give them an inch. Where are the great swords? Get the great swords to take out the enemy general. There we go. Absolute mayhem, but we got there. Actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be, all things considered. We were actually outnumbered in that fight. Just about, only slightly. Or, or were we? No, yeah, we were. A little bit. So there we are. The secessionists have been driven out of Reichland. Province has been secured. As is my right by Sigmar's crown. Start restoring some public order. That's going to bring us towards the end of our first session. Um... Our next goal, of course, is going to be to clear out the last of the rebels by getting them out of the fortress of Helmgart. Who calls? The, I'll just quickly assign these uh, leftover skill points. There we go. Upgrade our infantry some more. Champion of the faith. Rank up, uh, rank up our arch lector as well. Oops. There we are. 
So there we have it. That brings us to... Wow, turn five. <laughs> yeah, turn five in an hour. By me. Okay. Well, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you had a good time. Um, we're uh, we're going to keep going for, with this. Uh, I think we'll probably try to achieve the short campaign victory. Uh, when we get to that point, we'll d I'll, I'll decide whether or not I'm enjoying it enough to keep going for the long campaign victory. Um, if we don't, if we stop at the short campaign, we'll probably move on to a different faction, see what they're like, uh, learn about their lore as well. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end. So um, this is also my first time doing this kind of thing, by the way. So if you've got any feedback, any suggestions, um, that's that's always welcome. Um, yeah, cheers. See you next time.